All right, let's not get carried away, okay? Let's relax. Um, sorry, was that a question? Did I miss you? Um, yes, I've been here 21 years now. It's, I, uh, it's the longest I've ever lived anywhere. So, yeah. Um, but um, it's not about Macon or New York for me. It's about people. It's always was and always will be, you know? When people go to Israel and they touch a tree and they go, oh, this, this is a tree that maybe Jesus touched. The trees don't need to be born again. People do. So it's always about people. And um, you know and I know this place is special. It, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer, right? Um, but it takes sometimes you to travel and go to other places to see the great contrast of what we have. Um, and the reason why this place is so special is because of the people, not the place. The place is insignificant, the people. So, yes, I missed you guys a lot. I sure did. But it was, um, it was a tremendous time, 49 days of reading the Bible, not for anybody but just for me. 49 days of being Greg, not Rabbi. 49 days of not answering any questions. Um, 49 days of kind of doing whatever I want. It's amazing. Just amazing. And so, uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be back. <laughs> uh, <laughs> ecstatic, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Overjoyed and overwhelmed. Um, <laughs> this morning I went for my little prayer walk. I haven't been outside since I got back. I've had to take care of so many things indoors. Um, it's hot. I mean, in New York, there wasn't a day over 80. And in the mornings, you, sometimes you need almost a sweatshirt. Yeah, big wow, beautiful. And the water, it actually has waves. <laughs> Lake Atlantic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I got to see my family and friends and Burns family and friends. And we had a good time. Thanks for letting me uh, get away. Um, I went for my prayer walk this morning. You know, I live across the street, and there's a pond, and there was a young man fishing there. And uh, I said hello, and he said hello. I said, what's your name? And he said, Omar. And he said, do you fish? And I said, I fish for men. And then I went, let me explain. <laughs> because of the world we live in. <laughs> I wanted him not to get the wrong impression and start calling me Caitlin Hirschberg, if you know what I mean. So uh, I explained to him, and, and then the wackiest thing, you know, I had a perfect piece this morning about service today. And I shouldn't preempt it, maybe, but I feel like I have to. Um, you know, I said, where are you from, Omar? Were you born here? And he said, no, I'm, I'm from New York City. And Queens, too, you know, the boroughs. And it was just God's way of saying to me, I'm going to do something special today. And I do believe that. Let me just preempt this, okay? Beth Yeshua has a lot of very uh, strong believers, a lot of very committed believers, a lot of people that are doing the best to raise their families in the Lord. But I want to tell you something, a little message to some of you strong believers. You make it way too hard for people to come to the faith. Way too. Because you yourself are still repenting every day because of sins you commit, right? So what you don't realize is repentance is lifelong. You'll be doing it till you close your eyes or he comes. So why make it so hard for them to come to the fold when you yourself are still sinning? So I, I know uh, when the Lord speaks to me, he doesn't speak to me all the time, but when he does, I, I know his voice. There is somebody in this building that really needs to surrender their life to the Lord. And I really am not interested in what anybody else thinks. I could care less, and I want you to care even less lesser 
what they think. Um, and no, you don't have to have your act all together. You don't have to have every sin issue taken care of. It's not going to happen. Nobody comes to the Lord that way. You just have to be willing to say, I don't want to do this life alone anymore. I don't want to keep going down this road unguided. I trust you, and I want to walk with you. I know you want to walk with me, so I'm surrendering my life to you today. And your life will change. It will absolutely, positively change. You will start to hear the voice of God, and then it's just up to you to follow that voice or not. The times you follow it, you're going to walk in wisdom and magnificence. The times you don't, it's probably going to be a little rough for you, but you can get right back on the road. Right, believers? Right, all mature, holy people? Right? Okay. So if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and we invite you at the end, don't be embarrassed because I'm going to tell you a little secret. Every single soul in this building and every single soul that's watching on that camera desperately needs to be born again, again. This is a safe place. You don't have to put on any facades. You don't have to put on your church face. And please, don't tell me everything is fine. We don't have cute sayings like too blessed to be stressed. It's ridiculous. It's a stressful society. It's a stressful world. And even if things are going well for you today, you might be sitting next to somebody who just got the most horrific news this morning. So no man is an island. My hope and my prayer and my absolute belief is that you came as you are today. You will not leave as you came. That's for sure. I'm going to read a psalm like I always do. The psalms are just songs. There's 150 of them. Um, I like to put titles to the song. I could be so wrong. But this song is called The Wonderful Works of the Lord. It's Psalm 111. Most Christians don't think they know any Hebrew, but if you know the word hallelujah, you know Hebrew because that's a Hebrew word. So I'm going to start with a Hebrew word because that's how the psalm starts. And it has an exclamation point, so hallelujah. hallelujah. Can't speak for you, but I will wholeheartedly give thanks to the Lord. In the council of the upright and in the council of the assembly, which means in small gatherings and in big gatherings. The deeds, the works of the Lord are great, greatly desired by all who enjoy them. I, for one, enjoy them. Probably the Mount Everest of all his works, besides raising Yeshua from the dead, was deliverance from Egypt. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness continues forever. He has gained renown, that's a reputation, for his wonders. Adonai is merciful. That means tender, loving, and kind, and compassionate. He absolutely cares. He gives food to those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. That means he is faithful to all his promises. He shows his people how powerfully he works by giving them the nations as their heritage. That's Deuteronomy 7. Please don't fall under the, the deception that God just kicked out the nations and let Israel came in. If you read Leviticus 18, 24 to 26, you'll find out why he kicked them out. They were doing detestable, horrific things, and he gave them chance after chance after chance to repent. And when they didn't, he said, I don't know you. The works of his hands are truth and justice, and his precepts can be trusted. That means his statutes are dependable. They have been established forever and ever. His ways and his laws aren't going anywhere. To be carried out truly and honestly, he wants sincerity. He sent redemption to his people. This was written 3,000 years ago, so he's not talking about Yeshua. He's talking about Egypt and Babylon. But currently, if I can put a prophetic spin on it, the Jews are coming home from all over the land. You are in the absolute positive last days. Anybody that doesn't realize that, I, I, I don't know what you're seeing or what you're reading. I'm not big on puzzles. I can't stand puzzles. Never did a jigsaw puzzle. I'm sure some of you know what a jigsaw puzzle is. I can tell you that when a person does a jigsaw puzzle, you can't tell what it is till about the last 25 pieces. Guys, we are in the last 25 pieces of this puzzle. 
His name, that means his shem, his reputation, what he's famous for, his name, is holy and awesome. The first and foremost point of wisdom is the fear of the Lord and all those living by it gain good common sense. Common sense. Sense is the only thing that's not common these days, right? You look around. Even some believers. The God gave you common sense. What did you do with it? But if you live by his ways, you're living by common sense and your decisions will be good. If you live by his ways, your decisions will be good. Even if you think they're good for your family, they might not be. God knows what's best for your family. Live by his ways, please. I'm begging you. Last but not least, his praise stands forever, which means his hallelujah never ends. Even if today we decide to not praise him, there are angels and elders in heaven 24-7 giving him praise. The praise never ends. It was, is, and always will be for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Shabbat shalom. Father, we can't thank you enough for this day. I'm so glad that you chose to set aside a day just for you and your children to hang out. So, so good of you. So kind of you. I don't know how you get a bad rap. We do all the sinning. You do all the saving. Every time something goes right, man takes credit. Every time something goes wrong, you get the blame. It's so sick and distorted. But Father, this is your place. You are so welcome here and needed here. We love you and bless you. And I hope our praise is appropriate today. It's in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.